So we finished Hodgkin lymphomas. Let's move on to non-Hodgkin lymphomas. Just to recap, non-Hodgkin lymphomas are characterized because they don't have those reed sternberg cells, correct? And also non-Hodgkin lymphomas are more common and they're more aggressive. But what they do share in common with uh, Hodgkin lymphomas is that they're characterized by their cell type. And mainly when we talk about non-Hodgkin lymphomas, we're gonna talk about B cells. While we're on the subject of lymphomas, because it is a cancer of um, white blood cells, particularly in your lymph node, that's where it gets the name lymphoma, I just wanna recap the structure of the lymph node. So your lymph node is, I'll just make a shape like this, it's kind of like your kidneys where you have a outer cortex, cortex, and then the inner medulla. And there's a capsule that goes and surrounds your lymph node and protects it. And there's these invaginations of the capsule called trabecula. But the most important thing is that in your cortex you have these follicles. You have all these follicles. All right, follicles. And these follicles contain your B cells. And you can have many subtypes of follicles. You can have a primary follicle uh, where it holds naive B cells and kind of stores it there. So primary follicles are gonna be these very dense follicles. I'll just write this one as a primary follicle. However, if you encounter an antigen and your B cells get activated, they'll start to uh, proliferate, they'll start to differentiate, they'll start to mature, and the follicles will start to look different. The follicles will start to have this clear center called a germinal center. Germinal as in germ cell because you're basically proliferating a lot. And now this follicle is called a secondary follicle. And surrounding your follicle, you have other B cells that, that kind of shroud it. We call that the mantle zone. So this right, mantle zone. Mantle means, uh, traditionally, it means like a cloak or a shroud. So the mantle zone just, is just B cells that kind of surround the follicle. So that's all in your cortex. And next... And around your cortex, you have your paracortex, that makes sense. And in your paracortex, that's where your T cells are. And then finally in your medulla, that's where your macrophages are. So I just wanted to give a quick kind of rundown on the lymph node structure. That's it in a nutshell. Now let's move back on to non-Hodgkin lymphomas. Let's say someone comes in, has all the signs of uh, lymphoma, you biopsy the node, you don't see any reed Sternberg cells, so you know you're dealing with non-Hodgkin lymphoma. And when you biopsy the lymph node, you see all these follicles. All these follicles all around. This is a subtype of non-Hodgkin lymphoma we call follicular lymphoma. Makes perfect sense. Follicular follicles. And in here, they're going to have the follicles, but but the architecture is going to be destroyed. You're not going to have follicles just in your cortex. You're going to have all these huge, large, irregular follicles. You're going to have a bunch of nodules. You're going to see, you're going to see cortex. You're going to see follicles into your medulla, so everywhere. So I'll just write architecture not preserved because it is a cancer, essentially. You don't expect it to be preserved. One of the most important things is to know it's highly associated with a translocation in 14 and 18. 14 carries your immunoglobulin heavy locus, a gene that controls the production of your heavy chains. That's where it gets its name, heavy locus. And you translocate that onto chromosome 18, which contains your BCL2 locus. And this controls BCL2, which is anti-apoptotic. All right, anti a Apoptotic, very important, you know that? Anti-apoptotic, meaning you just keep proliferating. You can't, your cells don't die. They're basically immortal. And that's what causes follicular lymphoma in many cases. I just wanna take a, take a moment here. Um, when we talked about leukemia, we talked about leukomode reaction, how you differentiate the two. And here, let's talk about follicular lymphoma and how to differentiate follicular lymphoma from just uh, increased follicles when you have an infection. 
when you have an infection, your, your lymph nodes will increase, will, will basically rev up your B cells and increase the follicles. So how can you tell the difference between that and follicular lymphoma? Well, follicular lymphoma, your architecture is not preserved, so your follicles are all irregular. They're gonna extend past the cortex. Follicular lymphoma has a 14, 18 translocation. And then follicular lymphomas also lack these important macrophages called tangible macrophages and those macrophages will kill your irregular b cells so when it lacks those then your b cells can keep going haywire yeah so that I just, that's just a side note i just wanted you to kind of understand that so that is follicular lymphoma now let's say you have another patient coming in and they have all the signs of lymphoma and you biopsy the node don't see very sternberg cells so you know this is not hushing and this time you don't see any follicles either. You just see a diffuse proliferation of B cells. This diffuse proliferation of B cells. We call this diffuse large B cell lymphoma. Makes perfect sense. Diffuse large B cell lymphoma. This is also associated with the translocation 1418, just um, not as much as follicular. And yeah, I think that's all I wanna talk about on diffuse large B cell. Another thing, mantle cell lymphoma. Recall your mantle zone was just uh, the zone around your follicle, just the B cells around your follicle. This deals with the B cells that usually surround your follicle, your mantle zone. Something you should know about these B cells is that they're often very immature and mutated. In fact, they resemble CLL. We talked about CLL. It had this really mutated B cell that expressed CD5. And we talked about how that's, that's not normal. CD5 is usually seen more in T cells. So important that you know this one is CD5 positive. Also important that you know it's associated with a translocation on 11 and 14. Again, 14 is your immunoglobulin heavy locus which deals with your heavy chains. 11, on the other hand, is cyclin D1 gene that makes cyclin D1 protein. And cyclin D1 protein helps the progression from the G phase into the S phase. And with overexpression of that, then you have cell proliferation and on and on, and that's what gives you the cancer. That is mantle cell lymphoma. Next up is gonna be Burkitt's. Burkitt's is perhaps the most famous. Burkitt's lymphoma is highly associated with EBV. And this is similar to uh, diffuse large B cell lymphoma. So it's gonna be a cancer of your B cells and it's gonna have, uh, it's gonna be diffuse. So you're gonna be lacking follicles. So I was just writing no follicles. What separates it on the other hand is that there are three variants of it. That's quite distinct three variants of it. There's an endemic variant seen in Africa. They call it endemic because it's one of the most common causes of lymphoma in particular regions of Africa. So that's why we call it endemic. And there are theories that chronic malarial infections seen in Africa can basically help EBV cause this variant of Burkitt's where it affects lymph nodes and areas where other lymphomas just don't. And the main area is gonna be your head and your jaw. So I'll write head and jaw. You'll see these eruptive lymph nodes in the head, neck, jaw area. There's a picture in my notes. You should know it well, head and jaw. You're thinking of endemic African variant of Burkitt's lymphoma. If we're moving back to the States, we call this the sporadic form. So it's not, um, I guess, located in one particular area. It's sporadic can be anywhere. And this is seen more in the US and this, and this affects lymph tissue of the gut, particularly the distal small bowel, so around your ileocecal area. And then last but not least, the last variant is seen in immunodeficient patients, whether they're taking immunosuppressive drugs or whether they have HIV. In fact, it is an AIDS-defining lesion. AIDS-defining. Whether it's because um, you know your immune your immune system just can't battle EBV, what have you, just know it's associated with immunosuppression. 
Some classic histological findings of Burkitt's, they call it starry sky. That's because a diffuse sheet of B cells is basically the sky, so that'd be your sky. And then the stars are going to be these macrophages, these large macrophages that kind of make it look like a starry sky. That's, that's stretching the imagination. There's a picture in my notes. You can, I guess, if you really look far away, it'll look like a starry sky. But that's what they classically call it. There's a chromosomal abnormality that's associated with Burkitt's that you must know. And that's going to be your translocation of 8 and 14. Again, 14 is your immunoglobulin heavy locus. 8, on the other hand, is going to be your CMYC gene. And this gene creates a protein that causes cell progression. And if you have overexpression of it, then you have constant cell progression. That is Burkitt's lymphoma. So those were your most common lymphomas. Now, how do we treat them? We can give chemo. The standard chemo treatment is called CHOP, CHOPPER, or CHOP-R. CHOP is an acronym for the drug names. Unfortunately, it's not very helpful for us because it's the brand name and not the actual generic name. So I, ha I left it in my notes, but I wouldn't really spend too much time memorizing the brand names. The R, on the other hand, is very important, and the R you must know. R stands for rituximab, and that MAB is a monoclonal antibody against CD20. Why do we do that? We just talked about the most common non-Hodgkin lymphomas. And we said most of them are from B cell origin. Don't a lot of B cells express CD20? That's why we give rituximab. Now I wanna finish the video by talking about a little more rare forms of non-Hodgkin lymphomas. Recall, lymphomas affect lymphoid tissue. That doesn't just mean your lymph node. You have lymphoid tissue elsewhere. So we call those extranodal non-Hodgkin lymphoma. Extranodal meaning outside of the node. One of the most important ones is MOLT lymphoma. MOLT stands for mucosa associated lymphoid tissue. Uh, you see a lot of these lymphoid tissue in your gut, so your GIT. And chronic inflammation of this lymphoid tissue can cause malt lymphoma. And there are many causes of chronic inflammation, but the most important one you should know is H. pylori. That's what causes your ulcers and your chronic gastritis. And anytime you have a bug that causes cancer, know it well, please. So H. pylori. And in fact, if you treat H. pylori, you can actually have regression of the malt lymphoma because that's what's causing it. Another one is CNS lymphoma. About 90% of CNS lymphoma is actually a diffuse large B-cell lymphoma, but it's seen in the brain and it's associated with HIV patients or immunosuppressed patients. In fact, again, it is an AIDS-defining lesion. So an HIV patient will come in with seizures and mental changes, so you're thinking something wrong with the brain. You do an MRI scan and it'll show ring-enhancing lesions. What the heck is that? That's just basically a very sharp, bright lesion, like, like a ring, essentially. And I think that does it for all I want to talk about on non-Hodgkin lymphomas. That does it for your lymphomas. Hope you enjoyed the video. See you next time.